Okay. Uh, before we, we continue with your questions, let us discuss about dielectrics. Oh, by the way, before starting even the dielectrics. Now, in these examples over here, when we were connecting various capacitors, the notation for a capacitor is these two lines. That's just a notation, but it doesn't mean that this is a parallel plate capacitor. If you have a cylindrical capacitor or a spherical capacitor, still the notation is this one. This can be a spherical capacitor, this can be a parallel plate capacitor, etc. These relationships still hold for those cases. These are through the, this way of adding two capacitors in series holds whether the capacitors are parallel plate capacitors or cylindrical capacitors or uh, spherical capacitors or just a mixture of them. Now let's look at dielectrics. Now the idea, why do we use dielectrics? Well, one reason is, as I mentioned before, I mean, when you are building these capacitors, you have to make sure that these plates or whatever they are uh, using to make the capacitor, they do not touch each other. They shouldn't be touching each other. So that if you put some charge over here, it shouldn't go to the other side. It should just stay where you put it. And uh, one way to make sure that even though they are very close to each other, to make sure that they don't touch each other, just put some insulator in between. Now, that insulator is what we call the dielectric. It's just a dielectric. Now, of course, if we put something over there, it will influence the properties of our capacitor. Now, the question is, what will be the, how will the capacitance be influenced by this dielectric? Now, let's see what goes on. What is made of, what is a dielectric made of? What is an insulator made of? Plastic. Plastic is an insulator. So what is it made of? What is plastic made of? Carbon. carbon. Okay, it's made up of atoms. Whatever the atoms are. There is the carbon, hydrogen in various combinations. What are atoms made of? They are the electrons and the nuclei. So whatever the dielectric you are using, it is made up of charged objects. You have the electrons and the nuclei. And let's say you have this capacitor. Again, I will just show it as if it is a parallel plate capacitor, but the idea is basically the same in all the capacitors. If it's a parallel plate capacitor, let's say on this plate we have the positive charges, on this plate we have the negative charges, and the dielectric is also made up of uh, charges. So the positive charges of the dielectric will be attracted to the negative charge, and the negative charges of the dielectric will be attracted to the positive charge. Well, this is not a conductor, so these negative and positive charges are not free to move. They cannot go away. But still, they will be displaced slightly. Just imagine you are hand in hand with your friend. If your friend wants to go in one direction and you want to go to the other direction, well, you cannot separate. You are hand in hand. But still, you can just Make, take one step in the direction that you would like to go. Just like that, the electrons and the nuclei. The nuclei will move one step towards the negatively charged plate and the electrons will move one step to the positively charged plate. So let's say, let's, uh, if this is your atom, around it you have the electrons without any applied electric field. Now, you apply some electric field to your system. Let's say you have an electric field pointing in this direction. What will be the direction of the force acting on the electron? The electron. It's negatively charged. So the force acting on the electron will be in that direction. So the force act, the electrons will try to move in that direction, whereas the nuclei will try to move in this direction, so they will be slightly separated. So your new system will look something like this. So this end is slightly positively charged. This end, it would be slightly negatively charged. 
essentially you will be creating a dipole in your material, in your dielectric. There won't be a current. If it was a conductor, you, you would be creating a current. So the charges will move. But in this one, the charges are not allowed to move. Nevertheless, you are just creating a dipole from the atoms who doesn't have any dipole moment, let's say. So let's, let's just imagine we have this dielectric over here. And we put, we, by putting these charges, we are putting this dielectric in an electric field. Now, that electric field will create dipoles inside. The minus ends of the dipoles will be towards the positive plate. The positive ends will be towards the negative plate. So there, if there is an atom over here, the electrons of that atom will be pulled this way, and the nuclei will be pulled the other way around. So we have a local negative charge over here, positive charge over here. Now next to it, there is another dipole. There is another atom. And the same thing happens to it. The negative charges move towards the positive plate. The positive charge moves towards the negative plate. And, and so on. You basically create this chain of dipoles. But let's look at this point. At that point, well, there is a positive charge from one dipole and a negative charge from the other dipole. So the net charge at that point is zero. Similarly here, there is no charge. Similarly here, there is no charge. So inside the dielectric, you will not get any charge. But let's look at the surface. From this dipole, there is a negative charge. And it's just negatively charged. So basically, this surface over here will be charged negatively. So you, you are creating some charge density, some negative charge density on this plate. If you look at this surface, if you look at the dipoles on that surface, well, the positive side of the dipoles is pointing towards the negative plate, and there is no negative charge to cancel that positive charge. So this surface will be slightly positively charged. So you see, there is the external electric field that we apply. Or the external field created by these plates. That electric field creates a dipole. You see, in fact, this phenomena is very similar to what happens in the metals, in a conductor. You see, when we were discussing the conductors, what we had said was, if you apply an electric field to a conductor, the charges in the, inside the conductor will move to the surface, such that uh, when the charges stop, the, to the net electric field inside will be zero. That, that is what happens in a conductor. The charges are free to move. They move ar around until the electric field inside is zero everywhere. Now, it, this is not a conductor. This is a dielectric. So the charges cannot move, but still they, they just do this very slight shift to one side or the other side. So that shift of the charges creates or induces another electric field this is the total electric field of my system. And you see, if you create, you put positive charges here, negative charges here, you put the dielectric, the net effect of the dielectric will be to reduce the electric field inside. You see, the, without the dielectric, you create these plus and minus charges create an electric field in that direction. If you put the dielectric, these surface charges in the dielectric will create an electric field in the opposite direction. So when you sum them up, the net electric field will have a smaller magnitude. But if the electric field has a smaller magnitude, it means the voltage difference between this plate and this plate is now smaller. But remember how we define the capacitance. C was equal to Q over V. If the potential difference becomes smaller for a given charge, this 
uh, charge that you put in your capacitor. That means the capacitance increases. So that is why when you insert a dielectric in, into a capacitor, you are effectively increasing the capacitance. Now, the question is, how much? You see, what you would expect is, if you have a, if you put a larger uh, charge over here, if you create a larger electric field, you should be creating a larger surface charge. So this, in, in a sense, the induced electric field. This induced electric field should be proportional to the total external electric field. Because if you apply a larger electric field, you will be trying to move the electrons and the nuclei with a larger force in opposite directions. Their separation will be larger. If their separation is larger, the surface density surface charge densities will be larger, and hence the induced electric field will become larger. So that is what you would expect. Well, if the induced should be proportional to the external electric field, well, if this is the case, the total electric field should also be proportional to the external electric field. So are you following? Do you remember Taylor expansion? Yes. Yes or no? Have you seen the Taylor expansion? Basically, it tells you that if you have any function, you can write it as its value at some other point plus its derivative at that uh, some other point times the de deviation from that point, second derivative times the square of the deviation, etc. Does this make sense? Do you remember this? Okay. So let's look at it. Let's apply it to the electric field. Now there will be an induced electric field. So you, put, you take your dielectric, put it in an, in an external electric field, so that this external electric field will slightly displace the charges, and hence it will create an additional electric field inside the dielectric. Yes or no? No? OK. This is my system as a whole. Well, there are nuclei all around. Well, it's, if it's a solid, the nuclei will be fixed. Around them, there are the electrons. On the average, all of them will be fixed. Uh, on the average, at every point, the charge is zero. Now you apply an external electric field. This is external. Now, what this external electric field will do is we, it will pull the electrons this way. So the electrons will just slightly shift to one side. So initially, let's say if this, is, this was your electrons, if this is the position of your electrons, if you put it in an electric field, they will be slightly shifted to one side. Let me put it in red. This is somewhat exaggerated, their displacement. So <laughs> this region, it has electrons, but it doesn't have positive charges. So this region has more electrons than positive charges, let's say. So this region is negatively charged. But in this region, the electrons had moved. 
So there are, the number of electrons has been reduced. The positive charges are still there. So that region is now positively charged. Now, let's say this displacement is D. You would expect D to be proportional to the external electric field. If you don't apply any elect external electric field, D is just zero. If you apply a larger electric field, D will be larger. So you would naively expect them to be proportional to each other. Now, the total surface charge density here is all of this D is filled with negative charges. If D is larger, the total charge in this area becomes larger. So the total charge is proportional to D, which is proportional to the external electric field. So the larger the external electric field, the larger the charge accumulated on the surface will be. But the induced electric field is the E created by, let me pull induced over here. The external electric, the induced electric field is the electric field created by this thing over here, which is oh, sorry, the induced electric field is actually a Q induced divided by A times epsilon zero. This is just sigma over epsilon zero. which is proportional to the external electric field with some proportionality constant. Now, the total electric field, which is the external electric field plus the induced one, you see this one is proportional to the external electric field. This is already the external electric field. So this total electric field should also be proportional to the external electric field. And usually, E total is defined as the external electric field divided by some constant, the dielectric constant. And this K, is larger than 1. Why? Because since this induced electric field and the external electric field, they are pointing in opposite directions, their sum will be smaller. This is the sum of the two. Sum of the two will be, should be smaller than the externally applied electric field. So K has to be larger than 1. So how does that translate to the capacitance? Where? Here. Well, it depends on what you call E induced. It's not the magnitude. It's the component. So E induced is negative. Because it's in the opposite direction. Now, let's see what all this translates to in terms of the uh, capacitors. So we have a capacitor. We put a charge, let's say, plus Q over here and the minus Q over here. And inside, we put a dielectric with dielectric constant K. Now, what we need to do to calculate the capacitance is just to calculate the potential difference between this and this this plate and the, between those two plates. That's what we need to do. So there is an external electric field, which is Q over A times 1 over epsilon 0. 
the area is A. This is the external electric field. The total electric field inside is 1 over k times q over a, 1 over epsilon 0. Because now there is a dielectric, the dielectric will reduce the total electric field. The potential difference is just the total electric field multiplied by the separation. Yeah, because in this problem, at least, the electric field is uniform. I don't need to worry about integrals. Since the electric field is constant, I just multiply it by the distance, which is uh, 1 over k, q over a epsilon 0 times d. And the capacitance was q over v. That is the definition. So this is equal to k times a epsilon 0 over d, or k times, let's say, c0. c0 is the capacitance of the system in the absence of the dielectric. So if there is no dielectric, the capacitance is this one. When we put the dielectric, it increases the capacitance by this dielectric constant. And this constant basically depends on the material that you are using. Now, if we know that dielectric constant, we can also calculate how much charge is induced. You see, what do we know? The external electric field plus the induced electric field, this is the external electric field divided by k. So this tells me that the induced electric field is equal to minus the external electric field of 1 minus 1 over k. So we know how much electric field is induced. Well, the external electric field was just q over epsilon 0. The induced electric field will be just q induced divided by epsilon 0. So we can determine this induced electric field, induced charge also. From the definition of k. Now, any questions on this? Let's assume there is an interrupter and there is the electric conductor. The length of the dielectric is just half of the uh, conductor. And what happens if we uh, separate the stack from two parts? You mean this one? We have two parallel plates, mm -hmm. and here we have a dielectric. The second example, so you have this one. Well, you see, the easiest one, as your friend said, just consider them as parallel and series. So you see, let's just imagine I divide this capacitor into two. Well, this is nothing but these two different capacitors where you connect the areas. But that is exactly the same as this one. Here you have one capacitor. And then here you have a second capacitor. The second capacitor is completely filled with the dielectric. And these two are connected in parallel. Well, if you look at this one, well, the idea is essentially the same. Just imagine you put some conductor over here. 
is neutral. It doesn't change the potential. It's already put only in a, a, a long and equal potential surface. So it's, it basically doesn't affect anything. But that means I can also separate them. This is the same thing as this system. just connected in series. Since this point, this point and this point, they are at the same potential because of this wire. Well, it's exactly the, what happens over here. So these two systems are equal. And in, in this system, dielectric completely fills the capacitor. Now let's not cheat. This is kind of cheating, it's just a shortcut. Let's calculate it from the definition. Let's look at this problem first. We put some charge Q plus Q over here, let's say minus Q over there. Now we need to calculate the potential difference between these two capacitors. Well, the potential difference is to calculate the potential difference, first we need to find the electric field. If the electric, if the dielectric was not there, the electric field will be just Q over A epsilon zero. So now let's calculate the potential difference. Well, let's say this is point A, this is point B. Let's just calculate it along this line. Let's say this is point C. E dot DL from the point A to the point B. Well, I need to divide it into two from the point A to the point C, E dot DL, plus from the point C to the point B, E dot DL. Now, E and DL, they are always parallel along that path. It's always we are moving from the plus to the minus charge, minus side. These are all always parallel. So from A to C, there is no dielectric. The magnitude of the electric field is just that one. Q over A times epsilon zero. Let's say this is D1, this is D2, times DL from A to C. Plus, well, from C to B, we are inside the dielectric. The dielectric will reduce the electric field, and the electric field will be just 1 over k times q over a epsilon 0 from c to d. If we just sum them up, we evaluate the integrals. This is q over a epsilon 0 times d1 plus 1 over k q over a epsilon 0 d2. This is the total potential difference. And the capacitance is just Q over this one. Well, let me just write the one over capacitance. It's just V over Q. This is one over A epsilon zero D one plus one over K one over A epsilon zero D two. But you see, this is nothing but the capacitance of a dielectric uh, whose area is A, whose separation is D1, and there is no, di no dielectric. This is the capacitance of the capacitor. And this is the capacitance of the capacitor with area A, separation D2, and with a dielectric inside, which is K. Well, the other one is somewhat more complicated. You see here, we just said Q is uniformly distributed over this plate, and Q is uniformly distributed over this plate. Well, let's look at the other case.
Now, the complication in this case would be if we put a total charge Q on the plates, it will not be uniformly distributed. You see, if in this region we have a charge density, let's say, sigma 1, in this region we have a charge density sigma 2, minus sigma 2, minus sigma 1, Let's say, let, let me call this point A, this point B, this point C, this point D. The potential difference between C and D would be the electric field in that region, sigma 2 over epsilon 0, multiplied by the separation. Now, the electric field between A and B, if I just go straight, This is sigma 1 over epsilon 0 times d times 1 over k. Sigma 1 over epsilon 0 would be the electric field in the absence of the dielectric. The dielectric reduces the electric field by a factor k. So this is the electric field in the presence of the dielectric. And multiply by that distance, that gives us the potential difference. But you see, this point and this point, they are on, on the same metal. So they have the same potential. Similarly, B and D, they are on the same metal. They are at the same potential. So this tells me that VAB is equal to VCD. These two should be equal. But that tells me that sigma 1 over K should be sigma 2. This is how sigma 1 and sigma 2 should be related. Now let's see how do we calculate the potential, the capacitance. The capacitance was defined as Q over V, which is sigma 1 times, let's say, this area is A1. This area is A2. Sigma 1 times A1 plus sigma, no, uh, this is A2, A1. Sigma 2 times A2. This is the total charge divided by, well, V is, just use any one of those two, either VCD or VAB. They should be equal anyway. Sigma 2 over epsilon 0 times D. And then you can just well, we already know what sigma 1 over sigma 2 is. This is sigma 1 over sigma 2, A1 plus A2 over D over epsilon 0. And sigma 1 over sigma 2 is just K. C is, this is just K. K times epsilon 0 A1 over D plus epsilon 0 A2 over D. Again, this is nothing but the capacitance of a capacitor with an area A2 without any dielectric. This is the capacitance of a capacitor of area A1 with a dielectric, uh, with a dielectric inserted in between. Now, essentially, it's the, they are connected in series. It's just this one. Well, then you can make many complicated configurations. Let's say you have such a system with one quarter is filled with the dielectric. But this is nothing but you have one without the dielectric connected in parallel with two connected in series. That one is exactly equal to this one. And since this is completely filled, we had already studied this. You know, the capacitance of this one, the capacitance of this one, and the capacitance of that one. Just connect these in series, calculate the equivalent uh, capacitance, add the, this one, and you obtain the total capacitance of your system.
Other questions? Yes. It cannot be in the same direction. Well, in magnitude, it will be smaller. You see, the extreme case would be in magnitude, the induced electric field can be equal to the external electric field. In that case, you have, that is what happens in the case of conductors. Inside, the total electric field is zero. These insulators are not as good as conductors in eliminating the applied electric field but they can only partially eliminate the applied electric field. OK, so see you tomorrow at 12.40 in P4. Well, if there's a problem with the room, I will just send an email to you. <laughs>